Offender Profiling is a prioritization tool. When the police are looking for an unknown offender, in a similar vein to how you might look for a needle in a haystack, effective profiling suggests to the police which out of the many haystacks they should look in first, based on a behavioral analysis of the case. Whilst offender profiling has been portrayed as this very mysterious and glamorous thing that near-psychic people do in films and TV shows, in real life there have been a number of successes and a number of failures. Investigative psychology encompasses a lot more than offender profiling, but even that it does with the scientific method behind it. In the UK, the people who do the actual offender profiling, the National Crime Agency's Behavioural Investigative Advisors, use offender profiling as only one of the tools they offer police forces, among several others. Providing behavioural investigative advice is the practice of using the individual characteristics of the offence as well as the unknown offender's behaviour and choices that can be gleaned from the crime site or the victim's account to advance the investigation. Offence characteristics are features such as how, with what and against whom the offence was committed. For example, does it appear to have been carried out spontaneously or was it pre-planned? Does the perpetrator seem to have experience in offending? etc. The unknown offender's behaviour and decision-making is really what the BIA is trying to get at, as this could help narrow down or prioritise a potentially long list of suspects. For example, if we could go from something as general as a male who was in the area at the time, which could be a nightmare to investigate, to something more specific such as a male who knows the area very well. He is likely to have had a personal relationship with the victim whom he targeted specifically. He is likely to have planned out the offence in detail and did so with precision and no mistakes and that might imply he has previous criminal experience and he is likely to have access to the specific tools he used in the offence. Well that would be so much better. In that case police might have a starting point and could prioritise investigating males who fit that description. So. The BIA would be looking at what did the offender do and why, and what did they not do, even though they could have done it. The choices the perpetrator made need to be extracted, if at all possible. Why did they do A, E and F, but not B, C or D? So the offender profile is used for prioritizing unknown suspects, but in order to create a profile, careful behavioral analysis has to take place. It is not about predicting an offender's personality, and it is only useful if the characteristics it ascribes to the perpetrator are something the police are able to look up or use to select whom to investigate first. And personality is not usually recorded on a database, nor is whether the offender has an unresolved issue with his sexuality, so the inferences made need to be a lot more practical than that in order to be useful to the police. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this content useful. You can get access to each episode's transcript with key learning points, timestamps and references if you get yourself onto my mailing list. Just go to the main website on policesciencedoctor.com and on the bottom of each page you will find a sign-up form for notifications of new content. Just enter your first name, your preferred email address and the type of organization you work for. You will not get any spam. This is just for me to let you know about new content and for you to get access to all the transcripts. Thank you.